Hello, it's Ryan here today on tips and tricks for magicians. I'm going to talk about sound cues and I have dug out of storage my tablet with the sound cues on from the last show that I did a long time ago, uh, many, many, many months ago. And I'm going to have a look at what the sound cues are and just go through each one. And it might be interesting, might even learn something, but no promises. It's, we'll see what happens. So let's have a look. I've got it set up here on my desk. This is a Windows Surface tablet that I use to run Show Q system. Uh, other people use Q Lab if you're on a Mac uh, or Apple product. The other thing I have here is this monstrosity. This is my music remote control unit, uh, naked. <laughs> Normally it's in a case, but uh, during the last year in the studio, I have tried to. How oh, I successfully hacked it into a foot controller so I have all these little uh, foot buttons I was pushing at certain times to control music. Normally in a show I'd be using remote controls in my pocket but more particularly on my ankles which I don't have right here but uh, by touching my ankles together I'm able to push the button to advance to the next cues. That's not mostly what I would use in a show. This is in my pocket as a backup plan in case something goes wrong with that remote. So it all controls the computer, but we're not so much about the tech today. I've written about that other times. Today we're just going to talk about the music cues themselves. So I'm going to walk through my show as it is, and bear with me because I haven't worked with this in over a year, so I might not remember everything, but we're going to see how much I remember as we go. The first thing, I learned this by trial and error. I have one cue that does absolutely nothing except to prove that my remote button is working. So. I press the button, and uh, oh, where'd my little display go? Hmm. Normally it pops up with a little piece of text that says it's ready. Maybe that'll come up later. But anyway, it activated, uh, so it shows that my remote is ready and working. The first cue for any show is house music. This is before people come into the theater. You would start some house music on a playlist. Huh? Hmm? Maybe my remote isn't working. There it is. Okay. So house music, uh, I have made the switch to using 100% royalty free music just because I've, I've found enough of it over the years and found a good source for it that uh, I don't need to worry about licensing or copyright, especially if I decide to film my shows I'm trying to do more of in the future. And I wanna put that video up online. I don't have to worry about any copyright concerns there. So I use 100% royalty-free music, even the, the house music here, it's all good to go. Eventually, people are gonna settle into their seats and you're ready to start the show. And I use an overture, a fanfare as I call it in here. And it just, it's, it's the music that's going to get everyone to quiet down, turn their attention to the stage, and get ready for a show. So you may not be able to hear me if I talk over it, so I'll just let it do its thing. It's going to fade out the house music, start the overture. It's a little bit kind of a cheesy uh, start to my show. It's my style. Kind of over the top. Just as that music ends, I know to be standing center stage, ready to address the audience. Next up is uh, an um, underscore, uh, which as I'm introducing, I, I introduced my first piece and it's going to start the underscore, which is just meant to be exactly that, under the, the talking. I'm still talking, I'm still explaining what I'm doing, but I found I'm a talkative person. If you've seen from my video, at least uh, meet me, I'm quiet. But, you know, on video, on performance, I'm very talkative. And I found an underscore allows me to feel more comfortable being quiet and letting my words flow at a more easygoing pace. The underscore fills in the gaps. So it makes it seem like there's always something going on. 
even though I can be more choosy with my words. A lot of people, when they use music cues like this, the next time they press the button, the underscore just fades out. But I learned a little trick, and it's particularly with if you have control software like this that can do a little bit more advanced stuff. So it's not going to fade out. It's going to crescendo and conclude as if, and people have complimented me on this, they say, oh, my, your timing is perfect. Because as soon as I finish, this is, I don't know what this would be in the show, maybe a newspaper tear. And as soon as I unfold the newspaper and it's all back together, So the music comes to an actual conclusion instead of just fading out. So that's two separate cues. One is the underscore, which is going to keep going and looping forever, as long as I need it to, until I hit that next cue and it interrupts where that loop is and tacks on the actual ending of the song. So I've cut the song into parts. The middle part, which loops, and then this little, uh, I don't know, what is it, 10, 10 second ending that's going to get tacked on. And depending on exactly where it lands in that loop, sometimes it sounds seamless, but even if it doesn't, it's not the sort of thing a person would notice. And it just sounds like I hit my cue, <laughs> despite all the improvisation and ad lib that I happen to be doing. Next up, another underscore, kind of the same situation. I wanted to talk over top of the music, and this is going to loop at some point. But uh, it doesn't matter because whenever I finish that routine, this is, I think, cups and balls in, in this show. Uh, when I finish that routine, oh. and there it is, another conclusion to the song rather than just fading out into nothingness. Just puts a little pin in it, I find. This next one is what I call a finale and transition piece. So it puts a finale on the, the trick or the routine I'm doing, but also covers the gap as I move to the next thing. And I want this music to come in just at the point when I want people to burst into applause. So it amplifies that energy that's already naturally occurring. It's going to take it to the next level. So just people are clapping, they're like, yay, that was amazing. And I'm going around, I'm giving high fives, and I'm shaking babies, and I'm kissing hands, and all that stuff, I'm running around the room. When I put away my props, I have picked up my next props, I'm ready to go, this is still playing, it's covering that gap. Until I get back to my mark at center stage, and it fades out. And so no matter what I had to do in that time, it might have looked clunky otherwise, but the music just seems to smooth it all out and cover up any uh, clunkiness of that transition. Well, I don't actually do magic to music a lot. Uh, it's not really part of my repertoire. I'm always talking, I guess. This is the closest thing I have. This is a, kind of a goofy, over-the-top, dramatic portion of the show with a really serious soundtrack behind it. And... Yeah, okay. As I'm introducing this dramatic, faux dramatic part of the show, this, this is very much movie soundtrack style. And I'm being all serious and putting everything into it. It's gonna build up and I'll just skip it. So I'm, at this point, I'm not even talking over it. I'm yelling over it. This is, <laughs> this is gonna be uh, pretty pumped up with the volume. And I had to, I had to let that one play out because there is no cue to fade that out in my in my cue sheet. Because uh, if 
if I can, for a short piece like that, it's easier to let it play out than have to remember to hit the button. So whenever possible, I let music play out. If I know exactly how long I'm going to be doing something, or it's following the music, I let the music just run its course rather than being manually uh, cued. Next up, we have oh, another, this is another underscore. And this is, I think, a great example of an underscore song because it's super simple. And it comes in really gentle. It's just this pizzicato violin. And in earlier versions of this cue sheet, I'd actually loop around on that for quite a while. I mean, now it goes to the next portion. So it's adding to it. And so I would loop on this. And I'd let that, I'd be more in control of when this song develops to the next phase of it. In practice, I found I would get wrapped up in the performance so much I'd forget to advance the song with the remote. And so I'd be now, because there's all these subtle little cues, I'd end up being three cues behind when I got to the end of this uh, phase of the show. And so it was, it was cool and, and uh, interesting, but I found Practically speaking, I just let the song run its own course and it would more or less match up. Now this does still loop. Um, we should get to the I fast forward here. It'll it'll loop to prevent it from ending early. Because I don't want it to end before I'm ready to end this part of the show. So it's gonna loop this just a couple little bars of the song over and over and over, which is what it's doing right now. No matter how long I talk, it'll keep doing this. When I'm ready to move on, I can hit the hit the remote and it's it's gonna what they call it in the software is release the loop. So it's right now it's it's wrapped up in this little loop. It's going around and around and around. It came in this way, it's looping around and around and around, and I'm gonna be able to let it go and finish out that track. behaving very well today. <laughs> Might be a dead battery because I haven't changed it in two years. So you can see it's just playing out the end of that song. And again it's another another little technical trick you can use to act as though you're perfect timing but it's just making it up as you go along. You're prepared to look perfect. Uh, I have a couple reprises in my show, so I'm actually reusing bits of music when that theme comes back into the show. So this is that super dramatic moment. It's it's a different part of that same track, but it's got that same. Skip ahead. Drum, drum, drum. So I'm reusing that music because it's it's reintroducing that it's a callback to that same moment. And on that same note, the next th track is also a callback to the trick finishes. Uh, just as everyone starts to applaud, let's boost the energy up and get more and more excitement in the room. Going around, high five, shaking babies. <laughs> Putting props away, getting the next thing set. This can go on for uh, two minutes if it needs to. It's ready to go. Interesting thing about this, so I have the power to press this button and fade out the music. But, what if it plays out? What if I'm doing something and it's you know, having more fun with the audience and visiting more people around the room? What if it, it comes to the end? Then I have this issue with the remote control system. That next time I press this remote, I'm actually fading out the music that's already been faded out. Because that cue is the next, next time I push that button, that's what I'm going to do. So there is a little feature in the software I get to the song and let the song end naturally. There's actually a way to skip over that unnecessary cue. And so next time I push this button, it's going to start the proper next cue as I would expect it to do. So I got another little tip that I learned over the years of, of learning this software and learning how to use it. So the next cue is my 
it's called closer here in, in the track in the software and this is actually a multi-phase cue it's like what I was talking about earlier but it's like this is actually I still use it so I start my closer and it's phase one is it playing it's been a long time since I've uh, used this thing so there we go okay so this is phase one of my closing music. This is an underscore, I'm talking, and the, sh the, the big reveal at the end of the show is starting to unfold. And I'm kind of pulling in all the different parts, so very low-key music. But when it gets to where the routine starts picking up pace, I'm able to let the music match that pace. I'm looping, looping, looping. I'm gonna press the button. When I press that button, I know it's ready to advance when it gets to the end of that loop. I can listen for it because I know my music. And let's get on with the next part. So it advances. It goes from low-level energy to mid-level energy in the music. And it's doing the exact same thing. It's going to loop around and around and around on this part of the song. I keep doing what I need to do until I get to the point where I'm ready to move on, I hit my button. It is now ready to move on, and I know my music. Because <laughs> it's the full phrase of the song. Here we go. So now it's level three the energy of this music. And I'm able to include this kind of the big, it's not so much a dramatic finish, it's a little bit more uplifting ending and uplifting music. So this is also ends up being my curtain call for this show. So I'm thanking everyone. Thank you so much for coming here. Thank you to the tech crew that helped me put this on. Yada yada yada. And good night. And it's, it's meant to match that emotion of like, hey, we, we went through something together. Let's celebrate that. And it's, you know, gentle, gentle it took me a long time to find the right music for this moment. This is the second track that I've used in this part of the show, and both times it took me a long time to find the right track to fit that feeling, to fit that emotion. So that would be the end of the show, in this case. And I don't actually have it on this particular cue sheet, but after this song concludes, right about now, you would have a moment of silence, and then the house music would resume at the end of the show and keep playing until everyone's out of the theater. So that's just an example of a cue sheet, of a music cue sheet that I've used in, in my show. Hope that was interesting, uh, maybe educational. I don't know, it, it's just a curiosity. That's what I specialize in, doing videos that may or may not be interesting to you if you're particularly working on one specific thing your magic show <laughs> here right here exclusively on tips and tricks for magicians <laughs> thanks for watching i'll see you next time if you have any questions about this stuff i know there's a lot i talked about a lot i didn't talk about with this music stuff uh do get in touch let me know i'm happy to be of assistance so long